Welcome back to another episode, episode number 79 of Speed Tips by Bob and Chad. We welcome you guys uh, online and looking forward to visiting with everybody tonight and answering as many questions as we can and and, uh, look forward to what's going on. So what's going on? Where's machine, Chad? Oh, just another exciting Monday here. Uh, We got to go to a race finally last week. We had the World of All Laws of Fountain City, so we made it out there for Thursday night. And uh, Unfortunately, Friday and Saturday got rained out, which kind of really sucked. We had all kinds of cool plans for our trackside team doing a bunch of uh, media video stuff. and We were all prepared to get some cool new footage, and yeah, that didn't uh, that didn't happen, but mm. that's all part of it. But lots of new yeah. stuff. Brought some gadgets with me. We been releasing new products like crazy. This is our new holder for that Nitro B radio. Those are pretty sweet. So this is our flat mount, so you can put it on your helmet or on your deck tin behind you. Those are pretty trick. And today's was a today's post was our our slider workstation. A lot of people. Maintenance time, so time to work on your sliders. Should be taking them apart and greasing them and making sure that they're all clean and good to go. This is a, a little bench mount piece that you can put in your trailer or your or your garage. So that slider deal is a slick deal, man. I mean, it's, it's a you know people don't think about it, but it's pretty easy to damage them shafts and stuff. So it's pretty nice to have the actual appropriate tool to hold it and, and work on it and. Uh, yeah, we need to look at getting one of them for doing shock absorbers. Yeah. Uh, what's the other new things we got? Then we we made foam inserts. So all of the weirs and our other company that I'm part owner of and we do the the manufacturing for is called Trace My Space, which is uh, foam inserts to organize your toolboxes. So we went ahead and made foam inserts for all your favorite Weirs and Machine tools. So if you just add an F to the end of the part numbers and you search it up on wearsandmachine.com, you'll find a foam insert and they're adhesive back so you can stick them on. Some some guys want it on top of their war wagon or by your smasher or, or just in your drawers. So, But it's a, another little side company that we do here called tracemyspace.com. Uh, organize your, your toolbox or your kitchen drawers or gun cabinet pretty much anything well i'd take the fun out of it opening the toolbox and shit's all over and you're trying to find a freaking wrench i mean geez organized that sounds like a great idea i appreciate that all right uh quick question uh does the slider deal work for coarse thread and fine thread yep so both bodies will fit in there uh our bodies now don't have a flat because we use the new jam nut style so it's just a round bore basically in here now and if you have an older one with the flats it'll still go in there too uh, but both uh, coarse and fine thread bodies fit in there yeah so what do those retail for um that is a good question i don't even have a catalog over here um i'm not even sure no, I'll look that up. On the internet. what's the part number it's uh, 251-14. 251-14. Well, like I said, everybody that's got a modified needs to, needs to have one of them because taking care of them sliders, I'll tell you what, that that's very important and, and not damaging them because they're as important as a shotgun. 60 bucks. 60 bucks. Um, Corey, does the pinion plate angle at right height go up towards transmission transmission or towards the ground for an a mod well it would be tipped forward so you're talking about pinion angle so it's tipped forward so the pinion gear would be facing down uh and that's that that's the pinion angle so uh, a mod is probably seven eight degrees depending on how much pull bar rotation you got i don't know if you're a imca usra style car or a ump ump cars get a little more a little more pull bar so they probably run a little bit more uh maybe up to nine or something like that but most of them are between seven eight 
Awesome. Um, Mason, on an IMCA modified four bar car, little open motor with three stage pull bar, where's the best place to mount the pull bar on the rear end, in front, middle, or behind? The, the pinion of the axle tube. Well, I've kind of, you know, well, we're, we're kind of, we, we went forward when and that was the deal when we were getting all kinds of movement in the, in the um, pull bars. Now that we're not getting so much movement in the pull bar, um, honestly, I, I'd recommend pretty much centered or slightly ahead so that it pulls to the point where when it moves the pinion to zero, that you're behind center. Um, the idea behind the pull bar is to pull into the pull bar and to keep angle pulled into it. Uh, some guys like it behind it. And, and so, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know what your opinion is, Chad. Anymore, it's about half a dozen of one and six of the other. Kind of, it's, I mean, it's a balancing act with the whole package, like we say time and time again. And, you know, uh, now that we don't travel the pull bars as far, you can definitely go center line or even farther back. But it, if you're a UMP style car, you're going to have to be in front of the center line just because of how much, how much movement you get and how much axle wrap you get. So uh, it kind of, again, depends on the balance of the car and what style pull bar you're running, but most of them are in front. Yeah, he's got a three-stage pull bar. Yeah. So, I mean, still, a three-stage pull bar is going to get maximum an inch and a half. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dakota, what's the importance of a right front weight jack position as to keeping the spring in line through the motion? I think that is huge. Um, making sure that that spring doesn't bind... In fact, we've got a video, I don't know if it's on YouTube or if it's on our Knowledge Center deal that actually shows that deal. In fact, I actually think it's on our on our YouTube channel um, that shows the before and after effect of that. And it's, it's huge because, in, in fact, you actually find once you square that, get that in there right so that that spring is working right, you almost have to go to a stiffer spring because the spring is no longer binding up. And then using, you know, Chad's uh, bearing and the cup so that it, it centers it and keeps it centered in place. The spring just works naturally up and down rather than trying to bind and twist and all this other stuff that it does. Yeah, the OD, the OD grab cups have really pointed out the flaws. I, I got some chassis builders mad at me for, for that. Some guys won't change their car and stick to the the old style uh, ID grab cups just because they don't want to realign everything and they got their jigs built and whatever. And I understand that, but at the end of the day, you want to have the best possible race car you can have. So that right front screw jack alignment is critical. Yeah, it makes a huge difference, man. I tell you what we do, we do a lot of them at the shop. I mean, that's one of the, one of the updates that we do to most customers is lining that thing up so that that spring stays in line. And, and like I said, that, that bearing so that it doesn't bind up so much and, and it makes a big difference. Uh, Corey said that was an IMCA car, which that makes sense. Um, Chris, when load sticking the rear of the car, do you need a solid rod on the other side to hold the rear end at right height? Yes, you actually do so that the other side doesn't move. Uh, Mason, what will raising the right rear lower forelink rod do on an IMCA modified? Well, it definitely raising the right rear lower mount. Now, are you talking about the right rear lower mount on the rear end or on the frame? If you raise it on the, fr on the frame, it's going to loosen the car up on corner entry. It's going to put more steer in it, make the car freer getting in. If you raise it uh, oh yeah, if you raise it on the chassis, okay. If you raise it on the rear end, it will tighten the car up on corner entry and tighten the car up all the way through the corner. Uh, 
I forgot to even look at the ticker to see how many days to the Harris clash. It's coming up quick. I'm just buying things here today. I'm not sure what's going on. I've been that way all day. <laughs> I wasn't super thrilled about getting out of bed the first thing this morning anyway, and it hasn't improved the rest of the day. But I did get my lawn mowed after I got home early enough from work that I was able to mow the lawn. With the amount of rain that we've got, have you gotten all this rain and stuff up there, Chad? We yeah. That... Rain and hail, and it's just been a mess. Yeah, I rained out Fountain City. That was uh, pretty unfortunate. My, the good the good part of him was Mason got some monsoon driving experience. He's 15 and has his permit, and he drove to the track and manned it downpour. So oh. he got to drive some rain and hydroplane a little bit. So he, he was learning. Hang on. Get in here. Come on, now. Forgot that I left my door open getting fresh air in here, and that gives him an opportunity to see too much stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, so, you know, that... Uh, uh, that would be good experience for him driving a truck in the rain. That's always a trip, man. Yeah. The wide tires climbing on top of that water. That's, that's kind of a thrill. My new truck's got that deal where, you know, if you go across the center line, it pulls the steering wheel, you know, drives me nuts. I got to figure right. out how I turn, I gotta gotta figure out how I can turn that off. Um, RC. What is y'all's input on left rear birdcage angle on an IMCA modified? I uh, assume you're talking index, right, into the spring. So one to three degrees into the spring is usually where we recommend starting. Yeah, and RC, if we've got more, uh, if you want to clarify that anymore, we sure can answer more questions if that's not what you were asking. What's the advantage or disadvantage of running a two inch offset rear end opposed to a centered? Well, it depends. You know, the only. The, you know, in, in, in my opinion, and basically it just moves. If your engine's to the left, it just moves the transmission and and drive shaft and all that stuff lines up a little better with the offset rear end. Um, it's not real common. A lot of people, you know, not a lot of people do it. Uh, but I know that uh, some of the guys that uh, um, are running a 60 inch rear end with a two inch offset on it. And uh, it just, you know, like I said, we don't our we don't do it. We we sell our sixty inch center rear ends. What do you recommend for torque on the rear hubs? Um, that's a great question. Um, all the cars that we do, we have the uh, bearing uh, spacer. Bearing spacers in there, so we tighten them down as tight as we can get them with the bearing spacer on there and lock them up but I don't know what the actual torque would be. Maybe somebody out here that's listening to the channel wants to chime in and give us some suggestions to um, help that one out. Um, USRA B-Mod struggles to stay on the bars on entry. Have tried multiple different preload numbers, some pretty drastic, very high compression on the shock, Nothing seems to help. Slider in front of the rear end and the shock behind uh, on the left rear. Any ideas on what would help? Our IMCA car has no issues, but the USA Air, USA, USRA car, we can't quite figure out. Well, not having that, not having that shock in front of the housing uh, the shock in front of the housing is going to definitely be tighter and, and help the car stay up on the bars a little bit more. You might contemplate a stiffer uh, 
uh, axle dampener shock that might help. Um, but if you've tried, you know, stiffer valving and higher gas pressure, um, boy, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. What, have you got any ideas there, Chad? Not really. I mean, you're doing the things that need to be done there, but if it struggles to stay on the bars, you know, maybe the spring is fatigued. I don't know. Maybe there ain't enough preload. If you're going to do the soft spring, a lot of preload thing, you got to rebalance the whole car, right? I mean, that's yeah. a hard to say there. Uh, I think I missed the question. Uh, oh, Todd says we're breaking up. Um, I. It's fine every, over here. Everything that we see on our end looks fine, so I'm not sure what to tell you. Uh, Mason Weaver start. wants to know is it at full droop? He assumes, and Todd, and then Todd, Justin says that it sounds okay there. Uh, and of course, RC answered the question. Yes, it is at full droop. Uh, Kevin wants to know what do the changes to make to the car to combat a rough, heavy race track? Well, you definitely got to free it up. A little stiffer rear, right rear compression shock absorber. Um, I don't know if I would go on a rough racetrack. I'm not real keen on going with a heavier spring. I'm more apt to go with the uh, heavier shock absorber just to kind of absorb some of the, the bumps uh, by freeing the car up, raising the panner or the J-bar up, uh, all that type of stuff. Anything that you can do to get the car to relax a little bit more through the corner. And uh, Kevin, we've seen your car on Facebook today. It looks pretty nice. Um, looks like you guys got to race last weekend someplace, so that was cool. Uh, Alan says that the Shaw School used to say 45 foot-pounds for torque on those rear axle bearings. Uh, Matt, what is that manufacturers are running a little weight spring in the left rear in an IMCA modified, but not as light as the sport mods? Is it strictly the slider? Um, actually, I think some of the modified guys are running softer than some of the sport mod guys. Um, we've had some sport mod guys that have been on some pretty soft stuff and actually went back to a little stiffer spring to kind of get, I don't know, the sport mod car without being on the slider, it, it just, uh, I think it doesn't work as good. Um, I know there's some guys that are doing it and, and they're, they're running good with it, but, uh, yeah, but as far as the answer to your question, uh, a lot of the modified guys are running softer. Uh, anywhere from 75 to 125 pounds is kind of what we're hearing. Advantages and disadvantages to a heavily compressed left rear spring on a sport mod. Um, well, number one, the life of the spring. Uh, number two... Um, the car is going to be a little bit more, I don't know. I, I think the car is going to be a little more inconsistent depending on how you enter the corner. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of adjustment in your driving style to, uh, because the car is going to want to unload and load a little faster. Um, so as far as when it's working good, you know, it definitely gets the car in hike, but it doesn't necessarily make the car, and how the car tractions up is the angle of the trailing arm. You know, that's what's getting you the traction real quick because it just puts steer in the car so fast that it, it makes the traction go right through that trailing arm and into the, uh, into the left rear tire. Uh, Corey, hey, Chad, to lower my spring table on my right rear coilover kit, which drop cup do I need? 
do I want to get? Well, if you're a coilover, the cups don't affect that. So I'm not sure if you're, is it a coilover on a slider, a uh, coilover on a shock, or is it a sport mod screw jack style car? That's, you're going to need to tell us that, uh, Corey, so we can answer that question properly. I think the way he's sounding like he's got a coilover. Yeah, so if it is a coilover car, a mod, uh, the spring table is actually where the. I got my drawings here yet. Keep them here. The spring table on a coilover car is where the device hooks to the chassis. Uh, so, like that. On a coilover slider, it'd be where they mount on the chassis. So, spring height has nothing to do with it, it would simply be the location on the, on the chassis. So you're on a shock coil over. Yeah, so it's an A mod. So the only way to change the spring table is to, if you don't have a screw jack car like this, how this is built with the screw jacks on it, to go up and down and raise and lower your spring table, you would have to use a, a bolt-in shock drop like our 243s, uh, 243S, or our 221-style clamp-on mounts. You can play with that right rear spring table and raise and lower it uh, to get the, to get the car to roll over. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, boy, Corey, I wish I had some advice for you on how to get rid of the rain because, man, we, we we got guys, uh, had a guy in there today that was talking about they were all hepped up about running three nights this week and they got to run one. So they were pretty disgusted. Uh, okay. Would you, uh, Scott wants to know, would you raise the pull bar angle, help create traction on an IMCA sport mod? Um, you know, more angle will give you more traction on a sport mod, whatever. If your traction device has more angle, the, the thing of it is, is you have to remember if it's short with a lot of angle, it's going to give you quick traction, but it's not going to last long. If it's longer and flatter, like 15 degrees of angle, you're going to still get traction, but it's going to carry the traction on down the straightaway for. So if you're running some real short race tracks, you know, I still would run the longer bar, but I wouldn't be opposed to going to 18 degrees of angle uh, with a 28 to 30 inch bar. Um, Kinson, what would you be, what would be a good basic shock setup for a GRT B mod? with 100 pound spring on the left rear. Well, Kenson, to tell you the truth, uh, your best bet would be to call the shop tomorrow and talk to Bobby about that. He could give you, you know, all the shock information as far as, you know, our normal shock program, just to give you numbers. And, 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 and I'm, these numbers I'm giving you are kind of an unfair advantage because it depends on who's shock, who builds your shocks and what numbers they look at on the shock. But in the old school number wise, you know, a four or five on the left front's pretty common. Um, right rear is, is a four, four, both of those would be linear valving. Um, the right front would probably be like a four, eight, four, 10, something that would, hold the car on the right front a little bit longer. Um, left rear is kind of a driver preference. Um, I mean, we build anything from an 8.2 to a 15.2, depending on how the driver is and how much help he needs keeping the car up loaded on the bar. So that kind of gives you some generic um, ideas. But like I said, I would... Uh, uh, call the shop there and uh, he could give you a, a whole lot more information and ask you a lot more information and, and get you set up a little bit better. Um, so with the birdcage indexing, you hear all kinds of numbers up to 15 degrees even. So what actually does that do going more into the spring does that just make the tighter or make it tighter or exit loose on entry um 
Go ahead, Chad. So I think I think the 15 degrees is possibly a droop number. I don't think you would start. If you started with 15 degrees statically, the cage would probably over-index and you'd be in bar lock, uh, which some guys are riding around on bar lock, but not really the most forgiving and, and advantageous setup that there is, uh, even though some guys live and die by the bar lock. But generally, uh, you're going to have 15 to 18 degrees of index at droop. So as that car hikes through the corner and that cage rotates when you're at full full droop it would be 15 degrees um there was some you know with the whole misconception of zero index there was some guys unindexing a lot to try and get that thing to be that supposed zero at droop which is the wrong approach also so i think still the best way i don't know bob if you're trying anything weird or not uh the one to three into the spring statically some guys will play you know plus or minus a couple degrees but not 15 15 has to be if somebody said that, I, I would guess that it's at droop through motion. Yeah, that would have to be a droop number. The most I've ever went in a static number is five. Um, we stay right in that three to five range. Um, but three to five gets us you know, right around 16 in droop. So, and, and that's probably more what I would be concerned about is the droop number, um, what it is in dynamic. And well, generally that... that Generally, it'll free your entry, so a little bit more index will get the car up and rotating quicker on entry, uh, you know, so adding a little bit of static. Yeah, I, I think it frees it up on entry. Technically, it's supposed to tighten it up um, on exit, but I, you know, that's another one of those things where I don't know if anybody's totally convinced me one way or the other on that deal um rc says yeah that, that that was his droop number if 15 degrees is a droop number that's pretty good that's pretty solid yeah yeah that, that's where i'd want to be um, like i said we're right at that neighborhood you know where we're at um justin wants to know does anybody make himes with a light or slight machine mark on the outside of the heim at the center point so you can quickly measure uh, links with the bars on the car, example being between heat and feature or heat and main event in a hurry. This is kind of actually kind of embarrassing. I've had this note on my desk for probably three years. Somebody asked me to laser the Himes and 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 do that, and I don't know, I guess, why we haven't done that yet, but I just made myself a list to actually get it done and make it happen. So be watching for some some black Chrome Molly FKs with a lasered centerline mark on them. Coming soon. Awesome. And I apologize for the three-year de delay on that. <laughs> well, sometimes things take time. <laughs> A lot of engineering involved in some of these things, you know. Yeah. Um, Hunter wants to know, spring table on IMCA Sport Mod. Best way to check that, check and understand how the spring table is affecting the car. Uh, Chad's working on a diagram, I bet. So uh, when the when the spring is separate, then it's everything is a ground measurement. So you measure from the ground to the tip of the screw jack, basically on a sport mod. So things that come into play there are the screw jack location and the location inside of the spring cup of the tip of the the screw jack, and also the spring height. So a couple more variables there, unlike a coilover where the spring height doesn't matter. Uh, the coilover only knows where it's hooked to the member. So this one, obviously, the the member is going to lower if the spring is shorter. So in a sport mod, you measure ground up both sides at ride height statically, and that'll tell you the inches of difference in your in your spring table. And when it's when the spring table is uh, higher on the right side of the car, it will resist roll. So the easiest way to look at that is like I always look at a teeter totter. 
is like if this side is higher to get this point to go over the top of that it's going to resist motion if you start low and you push on this it's going to instantly fall over that so um spring table is huge a lot of people don't even know anything about it and don't play with it but tuning that can really tune your side bite and your and your uh, overall feel of the car yeah it makes a big difference um you know it's like the analogy of the, the teeter-totter thing is, is so true and uh you know what we use and now chad's got come out with another more of a drop cup um but we use the the drop cup on the uh right rear just to make it so that it's down further and uh, um, that seems to work really well um, makes the car but you also the other thing is on, on a sport mod it's very important to have that drop cup on the front end so that the car rolls to the right front getting into the corner so then at any time it rolls to the right front, getting into the corner, whatever rolls to the right front is going to roll to the right rear anyway. So that's going to help that spring table in the rear and get the car to roll over. You find that once you get the car to roll over more naturally, you don't have to have so much panard bar angle in it, which kind of can tend to bind the car up a little bit. And the car will actually be faster through the middle of the corner, which is where, in my opinion, is where the race is won is all about phase two of the corner speed through there. So that works out pretty good. Uh, Justin says the only late laser would be awesome. Only place he'll order his Himes is from you, Chad. Um, Don used sweet box with a brand new sweet pump on the car. And now the steering takes harder, more effort to turn. Ever come across that good fluid and, and full thoughts? Um, it's very, you know, and you might actually want to give Sweet a call on that. That might be something that, you know, they might can, I don't know if there's a serial number, usually there's a serial number on it, and they can look at, I think they can actually look it up to see what valving's in that steering box, because maybe that steering box has got a real stiff valving for it. Because whoever had it before um, maybe wanted stiff valving to get lots of feel for the racetrack, and now all of a sudden it's got too much feel. Um, air in the line can cause that to get a, kind of a chatter. Uh, it steers hard, and it kind of goes d -d 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 a little, little bit. Air will definitely do that. Other than that, uh, you got any thoughts, Chad? It's got to be that valving. Uh, some, you know, they there's some fluid valves in there and things that are above my pay grade. But I'm guessing that something is wrong in that in that flow. Yeah, there's something with that torsion valve. There's something sounds to me like there's something wrong in, inside that box. Now, Sweet can actually repair that, but you'll be out of a box for a couple of weeks. Um, James, I use the weirdest things to go. Oh. He uses the weirs, or those things that you have to go over the bolts to measure. Uh, they yeah. work really good. We do have those. Uh, some of the situations on the car, it's hard to get in there, and I think that's back to this situation. Um, you know, we've had those out, and sometimes you're just stubborn and don't do what people tell you to do. But I think I understand now why the laser would be better uh, than having them slip over the head deals. And plus, if it's on an angle and you're trying to measure them points and the bolts aren't lined up, you're not getting a true actual center to center distance of that arm. So, um, like I said, we're going to make that happen. So, um, Bo wants to know right rear brake floater on IMCA modified. What's my opinion? Myself, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, what the idea behind that right rear brake floater is so that the driver can actually run the car a little bit freer and then he can get in on the brakes and hold the car and get more side bite off the brakes. Sometimes I think some of those things that we rely too much on the driver's control for can sometimes bite us. Uh, so I've never really been a fan of it. Now, I know Johnny the Jet used to run one all the time. I don't know if he still does. 
uh, I know there's some guys that uh, that have have run run that right rear brake floater and had good success. If I was on a smooth, slick racetrack, I could see where there would be some advantages to that. If it was rough, I don't think I would like it at all. Um, or if I had it on there, I would definitely, if it's rough racetrack, you'd want to level it out. You wouldn't want to have a lot of angle in it. Um, okay, Hunter, what's a good starting point, starting point for split in the spring table? A couple inches in the rear, inch or two in the front, uh, both being lower on the right side. Well, you know, I wouldn't go over two inches on the rear. Somewhere between an inch and two inches is a, is a pretty good number. Um, we've tried more than that, and, and, and that seems to kind of almost go the opposite way to the point where the car flops over on the right rear and is on the right rear too much. Um, the front, you know, that's the drop cup is a two and a half, two and a half inches of drop, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the drop cup on the front would be a two and a half inches of drop, but in the rear, uh, I wouldn't go over two inches. Uh, Jason's got an IMCA Sport mod. It bounces on the right rear coming off the corner down the straightaway. Bronco Buster. What can we do to fix this? More right rear spring. Well, Honestly, the right rear bounce sometimes can come from the left rear shock. Uh, what that's doing is the left rear is getting traction and causing the right rear to bounce. The other thing that causes the right rear to bounce is too tight on the right rear chain. Not enough, uh, not enough uh, movement in that right rear chain, and, and that actually lets the car bounce more. If the car's got to bounce, I don't know if changing the spring is going to actually help the situation. Uh, I would make sure and check my right rear shock out and have your shock builder redyno it and make sure that there's nothing wrong with that, either one of the two rear shocks. But with the amount of angle that we run on the right or the lower twirling arm on the left compared to the right, um, that can happen. Um, the other thing is, is if you're, if you're running that, that right rear trailing arm too flat, um, that can cause the car to kind of bounce because uh, the car is trying to determine whether it's wanting to go uh, on the left front or on the left or on the right rear. And it gets kind of confused on that. So I could see where that would be. I've seen some cars that have had that problem. And the, the ones that I have helped, it usually ends up being that right rear chain. Uh, there needs to be more slack in that right rear chain. Uh, Don says, thanks. Uh, Mason, on the rear springs of a stock metric four link, would you soften or stiffen the springs, add more drive or more forward bite to the car on a longer racetrack, or do springs have much to do with forward bite? Springs have a lot to do with forward bite. Um, you know, and the new thing with the stock metric stuff, a stiffer right rear spring, 250. Um, some guys are even higher than that. Some guys are lower, but most everybody's right around that 250 number. That left rear, wow, we've got guys anywhere from 100 to 150. Uh, I think there's even a couple guys that run like an 80-pound left rear spring, which I think 80 pounds for a stock metric car is way too soft. But uh, 100, a 125 and a 250 are the numbers that we – or that I see more – than not, uh, and that works pretty good uh, because, once again, you can load that left rear spring and, and it gets the car hiked up, so it puts steer in the car and makes the car actually go through the middle of the corner better and making it feel like it's got more traction off the corner. And the only reason it's got more traction off the corner is because you're going through the middle of the corner faster. Um, Seth, Heavy torsion bar, torsion bar, bent shaft, plastic interview parts wear. Make sure there isn't a restrictor 
in a fitting or a bad pressure line. Trying to solve the sweet box problem. Oh, okay. Got it. Well, thanks, Seth. We appreciate you chiming in on that. It's it's good to have you guys' input on this stuff. We I, I really appreciate all that stuff because some of those things, you know, I don't do a whole lot with that stuff anymore. I, I do I stick more to the chassis part of it and not not necessarily to some of those other components. Well, we've got a few more minutes for a few more questions. If anybody's got some more questions. Um, what's your plans for this next weekend, Chad? You got anything scheduled? I hate to say it, but it don't look good weather-wise again. <laughs> it doesn't. I, I looked at that today, and I'm thinking, my God, I think we're going to get rained out again this next weekend. After last weekend, or last weekend, I seen a meme that, you know, May in Wisconsin, it – it may rain, it may snow, it may sleet, it may be 20, it may be 80. <laughs> so May has been uh, crazy so far. It's, it has been, man. I'll tell you what. Yesterday was really nice here. At 2 o'clock, a rainstorm came through with hail and the whole bit. And, oh, my God, it lasted about mm, half hour, and the sun was back out. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Well, there's our old buddy, Pat Fagan. Geez, I haven't talked to you forever there, Mr. Fagan. Uh, so much information typically hidden. The time and effort you guys share is priceless. Well, I appreciate that, Pat. Uh, that, that we, we take that to heart coming from you. RC, really appreciate you guys' help on this. On the left rear cage... Again, so zero indexing to one and a half inches. I've tried both. Would you still do the 15 degrees at full droop? I would. Um, I, I think that 15 degrees at full droop is, is, is a pretty good number, but I think you're going to have to go more than that zero to half to get to that 15 degrees. I think you're going to have to start at a, a right around three to get to that 15. Yeah, I'm not sure if he, is he talking about he's either zero index, like with the bars moved, or halfway index, like one bar moved, or. But yeah, either way, the the whole zero index thing, the cage still rotates and indexes into the spring, at droop. So, it's you know the the whole thing kind of got named wrong when it was invented by whoever invented it. Um, yeah, so either way, when you're when you're zero index. Uh, or standard index and the standard stock holes, your cage is still going to index that 15, 16, 17 degrees into the spring when you drop out. So you don't want that thing to be to where it doesn't index through rotation. That's not going to be good. But a lot of people have made the mistake to think that zero index means that that thing is zero through travel and doesn't index at all. That's where, like I said before, some guys unindex that thing like eight degrees and I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, that's not the right way to go about it. But um, the whole zero index thing was when the bars are clocked and that's full droop, though they were lined up at 6 and 12, meaning like that would be zero index. But it doesn't mean you start at zero or end at zero. It just means that them bars were lined up at full droop. The cage was still indexed 15 degrees, even though the bars were in line. Gotcha. Uh, Jeff, what would it do if you have even length bars on the left rear of an A mod? Um, well, basically, it's going to take the indexing out of it. It would, it would not index, yeah. Yeah, it's you're not going to gain any indexing. If they're equal length bars, then it's, everything's going to try to move up and down equally and, and not gain you any index. I don't think that that would be an advantage. Um, you know, I know there's some guys that are running some equal link stuff on right sides, but that's because, you know, they're not wanting that right rear to index. Uh, but I've not, I've never played with equal length bars on the, uh, 
I've tried one inch split and I thought that was too slow. So we stay with a two inch split. Yeah, the whole the whole idea, like the like the two lane car struggling to get up. That's why the four lane car gets up so good because it has that the the two links basically to index that cage and get that left rear up in the air on entry. So, yeah, I would definitely not run uh, even length on the left rear. Yeah, I think that would make the car respond very lazy. You've heard can't turn in a forty acre field. Yeah, that, I, that think, be, I think that would be it. Yeah, you might need 40 plus. <laughs> no, no doubt about that. Anything new that you're working on that you want to share? Or? Well, we're going to laser some Himes tomorrow. I can tell you that for free. Awesome. <laughs> uh, no, we're always working on something. I'm not sure what we got going on right now, but. I know they were, uh, we were developing some camera mount stuff for the Trick Outdoors line for the 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 new brand that we're working on, the, the outdoor stuff where you can take a GoPro and film and, and take a Tacticam and film. So we're making some, some mounts for that stuff to go on, like the hunting turkey tent style uh, blinds. So, but uh, yeah, we're always working on something. We were, we tested a new part at, Fountain City Thursday night, uh, new tool, didn't work, epic failure. So we're back in the drawing board on that one. So but that's really actually going to be a cool, cool tool. So cool, I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't want anybody to know we're working on that one. So Awesome. Well, sometimes you got to keep that stuff, for, you know, with you know, competitive nature of the market today, you got to keep some of that stuff in your wheelhouse till it's ready to go to the market. Yeah, we don't want to spoon feed. No. No. That's too easy to do. What about you? Where are you going this weekend? Well, I, you know, Thursday night I plan on going to Marshalltown. Um, Friday night, uh, don't really know for sure about Friday night. I was thinking about maybe tracking up there to Britt Speedway, uh, Hancock County Speedway in Britt, Iowa. And uh, Saturday, I'd go to the Super Speedway in Boone, Iowa. Uh, I've only been to Boone once this weekend. I didn't make it last weekend because I was out of town. And uh, that's going to be about it. And then the following week, uh, we get to go run. They've got the late models coming to uh, Marshalltown Speedway. That's going to be a heck of a show. I mean, it, last year when those guys came, it was a hell of a show. And... Uh, the best part about it is, is they run their show and then they run the modifieds last at the very end of the night. So that racetrack is slick as slick can be. And in that place, when that place is super slick, top to bottom, it is so racy and it puts on such a good show that it's, it's just awesome. And uh, those guys at, Mar at the Marshalltown Speedway, they've been doing a pretty good job. We raced there. A couple of weeks ago, and the racetrack was smooth and slick, top to bottom. In fact, the best I've ever seen that racetrack be. I mean, it, it's been they, those guys have been doing an awesome job this year, and uh, I can't thank them enough for because the smooth and slick thing it, it just makes it so easy to adjust the car. And, I mean, if you're out to lunch, you're out to lunch, but you know, it's it's just. Uh, a better environment, so to speak. Uh, Jeff, what would it? No, oh, where did Jeff? Sorry, oh, no. Christopher. How does the shorter left rear bottom bar create more index than a longer if you running the bar uphill? Uh, well, it's just the way the cage, the, the, the indexing works is because when you go up and down, if you've got two different links, the, the bottom bar is going to pull that cage into an indexing situation. You know, and Chad can explain it better than I can probably. Yeah, same thing. It's going to move that forward and basically down and then let the top one cam basically is how it's how it's working. So, yeah, so that would be... Um, 
the, the, even though you have the uh, angle in the bottom one, you're still going to, it's still going to be, a, it's going to operate differently with different links. Uh, Tim, three link right rear spring in front or behind on a slider. Also, left rear is in front or behind and why? Um, well, if you're on a slider, I definitely run the slider in front of the housing. I, I personally like that better because even if you're on a solid upper link, um, you're, you're going to run as the rear end steers, it's going to rotate pinion angle into the car. And so it's going to take the pinion angle out of the car, which is going to in turn load that left rear spring. So that being said, when the car steers and the left rear comes ahead, it's also loading that left rear spring and traction in that left rear up a little bit more. So I recommend running it in front with the shock behind. Um, that seems to work pretty good. Uh, you know, the ideal thing, of course, would be to have a coilover where you could run them both in front, but it doesn't, you know, I mean, the rules are the rules, and and uh, uh, having that spring in front, definitely you're always working into the spring, where with it behind the housing, you can work uh, out of the spring. A lot of great questions tonight, good information and good content, and, and you guys have done a great job. We've got about eight more minutes for some more questions. Um, anything that we can help with, feel free to. Uh, what about the right rear? Uh, Tim wants to know about the right rear. Running the right rear, here's what will happen. If you run it in front of the housing, the car is going to run Real good. It's going to rotate through the corner pretty nice. Um, if you run it behind the housing, you're going to have more traction off the corner. However, with your when you run it behind, the car can actually get a little bit tight on corner entry and a little tight in the middle of the corner. But it definitely, if you're on a real slick racetrack, like a paperclip type racetrack where you you know you got to turn the car quickly and drag race off the corner, the right rear spring behind is definitely going to give you more traction. Uh, if you're on a hammer down type of racetrack, uh, I'd have it set up so I could put that, that spring back in front of the housing with the shock behind the housing because the car is going to drive so much nicer and it's not going to try to be tight and, and fidgety on you. But the spring behind, we you know, Back in the day, that's how we had all of our cars with the spring in front of the housing and then the uh, spring behind the housing on sliders and then the shocks the opposite way, and that worked really well. Um, it's just, like I said, the car can be a little, you know, driver's got to be prepared for the mid-corner part of the equation because it, it can get a little tight. So just, you know, you just have to adjust your setup a little bit. Uh, camber caster starting point for an IMCA Sport Mod on one-piece spindles. Um, I've always run right front-wise. Um, if your shock gives you the clearance, I would run 6.5 degrees negative camber. Uh, caster, I'd run positive 5. Left front, I would run four degrees positive camber, and I would run about two and a half, two to two and a half degrees positive ca uh, caster. That seems to work really well with those one piece spindles. With the two piece, you just have to go a little bit more caster, is all because they have. Uh, they, you know, they've got a, a, a different pin angle, so when the car rotates to the right, it doesn't gain as much caster as the one piece gains more caster, so that's why you run a little less static because it gains more. Uh, 
Well, don't forget to, you know, if you want to watch this on YouTube, sign up on YouTube and watch this, rewatch this or whatever in, in our 80 episodes or on YouTube. So you can go on there and watch any of them. And, and, uh, uh, and we've got other content, like I said, that, uh, that spring, right front spring angle thing. I know that deal's on there on YouTube someplace. Uh, that's a good one to watch. Everybody needs to watch that because it's it's pretty interesting. When's our next one? Our next show will be, let's see here. Today's the 22nd, May 22nd. Number 80. We got to do something cool. We need to Number figure 80. out. We'll have to do something cool for number 80. I'm not sure what it'll be right now, but we'll have to think of something cool. Uh, do you have a good explanation of pen inclination on the spindles? Difference between the pinto and the three-piece? Well, the pinto is a 10-degree spindle, so it's, it's got a, it, what it'll do. It gains more caster as it turns, and... Uh, the three piece is a, a seven degree spindle, so it doesn't gain as much caster. I actually believe the three piece spindle has more speed in the corner, in the middle of the corner, because I don't think it, it resists. Um, I don't think it, it has as much resistance in the middle of the corner because it has less uh, caster gain characteristics. So that's kind of my opinion uh, of the two. Uh, Butch, can you explain lower bar toe in or out on IMCA B mod? Um, what I have always done, you go ahead, Ted. You can you can kind of see it in that drawing just a little bit, but bar toe is your angle at the front versus the rear, measured uh, basically off the frame rail. Right, and and what we've always done, I've always angled my right rear one inch out to the rear end and the left rear two inches out to the rear end. The reason why we go the one inch on the right side is because then when the car rolls in, in dynamic mode, that right rear trailing arm is straight. Uh, the left rear, we angle it in because I want it to gain angle and it's going to gain more angle and it'll go to probably three inches of angle. And I just, you know, I've always thought that when you're trying to traction something up, if you're trying to pick up more in the center of the car or, or more in line with the right front, it would have more traction. So that's the biggest reason we've always done that in the past. Well, maybe we've got some listeners that would have some ideas on what they think we should do for the ADF show. Chad, love the tuning guide app. We would love to see load changes suggested be added to the guide. Not a bad idea. No, that does sound pretty good. I got a lot of notes tonight. <laughs> That's I'm good. Busy. I'm going to be busy. You'll, be busy. You'll have a busy day tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, Don't forget about those Heim joints, though. Cool. All right. Well. Well, it's been good. You guys have been a good group again tonight. We appreciate everybody chiming in and, and uh, we welcome all the input that you guys have and, and the questions. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you in two weeks. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.